when you're thinking about treatment um, of keloids, intralesional and catalog injections is actually first line for me. Um, and the reason for that is, is that it's easy, it's cheap, and it's um, fairly low risk for the patient. Um, and so uh, what you want to do is get uh, catalog or triamcinolone, which you can get, uh, you know, you can buy from any medical, you know, supply um, area. And it comes in varying strengths. So it comes in um, 10 milligrams per cc and it comes in 40 milligrams per cc. And you can also dilute it out to make your own kind of, you know, custom made strength. And what you want to do is you want to take either a 25 or a 30 gauge needle and you um, use that to inject the catalog directly into the scar. Um, and usually what happens is over the first two or three weeks, the symptoms start to get better. Um, those symptoms are things like itching and burning and pain. And then after a couple of injections, after a couple of months, you start actually noticing flattening of the lesion. Um, the big tips, I always say that, you know, people don't like intralesional catalog injections because they, don't, they think they don't um, work. Um, and really what you need to do is you need to make sure that you are picking the right type of scar to treat and also treating the scars in you know, an appropriate way. And so when you're thinking about the right kind of scar to treat, um, you want to make sure that you're picking scars that are either like sessile or flat. Um, you don't want to pick um, like dome shaped um, scars or kind of pap or like nodular or kind of uh, um, like papules or kind of uh, pedunculated scars um, because the issue with that is that when you get that flattening of the scar you're still going to have all this extra tissue. So you're going to get that kind of saggy flappy tissue that may not be that you know great cosmetically. After you pick the appropriate type of scar, you really want to pick the right concentration of um, a catalog. Um, and I think the big fear that a lot of people have is um, that they're afraid of inducing atrophy, so they choose lower strengths of um, steroid, and then they don't get the effect that they need, or they need to treat more, you know, frequently than would be, you know, kind of best for the patient. So my thinking for, you know, or I guess my thought process for injection of, uh, of uh, scars is that you want to pick a fairly aggressive, you know, um, um, strength, like 20 milligrams, 30 milligrams, 40 milligrams per cc to start out with, and then use smaller amounts. Um, because the other thing about um, injection of scars is that injections of scars can be painful. And what people do is they use very low concentrations of um, catalog, and then they use large volumes. And so then what you're trying to do is you're trying to shove all this volume into a scar, and that's that's actually what causes a lot of discomfort for the patient where you're getting that stretching of the scar tissue and it's uncomfortable. So I always use stronger concentrations, smaller amounts, um, and then I tend to find that the, the scars tend to respond a little bit um, better. So tricks that I always say, you know, when you're doing the injections, um, you always want to use a lower lock um, syringe, um, and that's because I say that no one really wants steroid flying back in their face. Um, the other thing that you want to do is um, you always want to make sure that you are um, basically not allowing the steroid to precipitate in the syringe. Um, in, in, in particular, with the higher concentrations of the steroid, the uh, 40 milligrams, even within a, like a minute, you'll start to see the steroid kind of precipitate in the syringe. And so one trick that I do for that is I draw back on the syringe and introduce a little air bubble. And then I just flip the syringe and allow the air bubble to tra travel up the syringe. And then I flip it back and I go back and forth like that. And that actually helps to um, kind of disperse the, um, the steroid throughout the, the uh, the liquid. Um, and the benefit of that is that if you allow it to precipitate out, when you inject the um, steroid, what you're doing is you're injecting different concentrations to different areas. And so by the time you get to the end of the syringe, you're going to have all this precipitate left. It may end up clogging the syringe, or you're just going to end up, you know, putting in a higher, a much higher concentration than you want it to do. And you might get those side effects of like atrophy and that type of thing. The other things that I, um, you know, tend to do after, uh, like once you're like, as far as the actual technique of injecting, um, you know, it's keloid scars in particular can be very tense. And so there's a lot of back pressure when you're trying to inject, which is why you need that lower lux um, kind of cap. But, you know, one thing that you can do is kind of a retrograde injection. And what that is, is essentially you advance the needle all the way into the keloid, and then you um, inject as you're pulling out. So what you're doing is you're creating a tunnel um, for you to kind of put that depot of steroid in. Um, you can do that with a number of different um, needle kind of gauges. Um, usually people do anything from like 25 to 30, um, you know, gauge needles. I tend to use 30 gauge needles because it works well enough for me, but some people do like the larger gauge needles um, in order to kind of allow Allow more steroid to get in that area. Um, you always want to stay in the scar and kind of in the papillary dermis because that's where the fibroblasts are, that's what you're trying to target. Um, and so if, you know, the other thing that I've noticed people do is that they will in, they'll start 
moving their needle and injecting, trying to find a pocket that's kind of um, easy to inject into. And what they end up doing is injecting into the, um, uh, the fat that's below the scar. And that can induce a lot of atrophy. And so um, what, uh, using that retrograde kind of injection um, technique, you, you, at least you're guaranteed to still be in the scar. You kind of limit, or kind of, not eliminate, but uh, like limit that kind of subcutaneous injection and also that injection that can go into this running skin. Because those are the side effects that, I mean, you may get, but you want to kind of avoid. So those side effects of atrophy, the side effects of hypopigmentation. Um, and, uh, and so those are the main things that you're trying to avoid. Um, after that, once you inject, as far as frequency of injection that I usually recommend, you want to make sure that you're injecting um, every four to six weeks, but no, frequ uh, no more frequently than every two weeks. And the reason why you don't want to inject any uh, more frequently than every two weeks is that because when the steroid doesn't work that quickly. As I said, the flattening of the scar usually takes several months. And so what happens is you keep injecting every two weeks and you're not seeing that effect. And so then you get this delayed effect and then two months later you get all this atrophy because you didn't realize that it was actually working. Um, so my general practice is do every four weeks, but I would not recommend any more frequently than every two weeks. This technique is absolutely not specific to skin of color. Um, you know, it really what it, the, the idea is that keloids in general are more common in darker skin populations. And so um, the treatment of keloids tends to be limited or it tends to be like, at least more prominent and or, or prevalent rather in skin of color populations. But you definitely get people of all skin types getting keloids or hypertrophic scars. And this can be, you know, can be applied to both. The main thing for medicine in general is that you have to manage like patient expectations. Patients need to know what they're getting into. And so I always, like, even with the, my method of injecting, sometimes I get hypopigmentation. And sometimes, and you, what I usually kind of address with the patient is that I say, okay, this is, this is a treatment. Your, your scar is currently itchy, painful, uncomfortable, tender. Um, it's growing in size. Would you, be more, would you be okay if you had a scar that was flatter, asymptomatic, but maybe lighter in color, or flatter, asymptomatic, or if I overshot and you had a little bit of a divot, would you be okay with that kind of outcome? And so as long as the patients are aware of that outcome kind of being a possibility, they tend to be perfectly fine. And I find that the majority of patients are actually completely fine with having a little bit of atrophy, a little bit of hypopigmentation, um, you know, a little bit of discoloration, and to kind of switch to, or to trade that off for like not having pain or this raised bump that they can't hide. So cosmetically, even some of the side effects that you can get from intralesional kenalog injections are still preferable to the actual scar. Mm -hmm.